for them to say. By 1986, the CIA were supplying the rebels with the Stinger missile. Capable of hitting a moving target five kilometers away, it represented a massive threat. The General Dynamics Stinger weighs just 15 kilograms, flies twice the speed of sound, and can reach aircraft flying five kilometers away. There was a perception in the CIA that the rebels were not technologically advanced enough to utilize such a weapon. But the guerrillas were quick learners and the new missile proved deadly to the Soviet air crews. One resistance commander remarked, there are only two things we Afghans need, the Quran and more stingers. Well, you see, the uh, basis for 10 years of war didn't change, and uh, we used one and the same basis. So, however, you would uh, change the routes uh, leading out of the base and back to the base, the directions were still the same. Uh, so, Mujahids built up a fortified positions in the mountains on the general directions of our approach to the airfields and uh, our routes leaving the airfields. And especially when they got stingers, uh, they had people literally sitting with stingers, and if not in a day, then in a month, at this particular point, uh, an aircraft would appear and would be shot at. The most dangerous time was around 1986. We lost a third of our men and a half of all our helicopters. Most of the guys lost were in MI-8s because they are most vulnerable during landings and takeoffs in enemy territory. By 1987, flare dispensers had been added to most Soviet helicopters. They acted as decoys to the heat-seeking missiles. Fixed-wing aircraft, too, utilized this system. Despite this, in 1987 alone, more than 200 Soviet aircraft fell prey to the Mujahideen's new weapon.